I'm Amy. I work for the Australian Conservation Foundation. And I'm going to be taking you through some key ingredients to run a successful platypus survey. Let's get started. To begin, I looked at the Platy Project map to find a location where platypus have been spotted before, but not for a while. Instructions on how to use the map are on the website. I checked the site was on Crown land, with good parking and accessibility. Don't visit places on private property unless you know the owner and have their permission. Here are a few handy things you can pack to make the experience as comfortable as possible. A phone, bring a notepad and some binos, wear some sturdy shoes. A water bottle, raincoat, warm jumper and a beanie are a must. A thermos of tea and some snacks are also handy. You can find all this useful information in the Platy Project Toolkit on our website. Remember, platys are most active around dawn and dusk, but if that's a bit too cold, choose the next most suitable time. Turns out, the site was brilliant, with a seat for comfort, a good view of the creek, a gentle slope between the bank and the creek, and an easy track to access. The site is at an old waterhole that have had platypus sightings in the past. After some simple and important planning, here we are with quiet anticipation at the location, wondering what signs we're looking for in spotting a platy. Platypus are pretty unique, but don't be fooled. Their unique features are not what actually stand out. Platypus are quite fast, so what you want to look out for is the V trailing behind them and a little head at the top of the water. You should see that move along and then they'll dive down into the water. It's also worth keeping in mind the platypus will often resurface close to where they dove, whereas other animals like the native water rat, the rakali, will resurface further away. While you're out looking for a platypus, it's important to record what you see so you can share this information with the experts. A photo captured on a phone, even at a distance, is great. Good gear like a DSLR camera or long lens can help too. If you do see a platypus, make sure you mark the location. You can use Google Maps on your phone. At a pinch, you can estimate it after. It's also useful to make notes of the things you notice, such as the movements of the platypus and vegetation along the way. To submit your sighting, visit the Platy Project website and upload what you have seen. Instructions for this can be found in the toolkit. Don't forget to attach a photo if you got one, location information, and to include any notes you've taken. If you were lucky enough to see a platypus and did get a photo, it's great to upload them to social media using the hashtag platyproject. Platypus are extremely elusive animals, so there's a good chance you might not see one. In fact, not seeing a platypus gives researchers valuable insights into platypus populations. Whether you did or didn't see a platypus when you went out, log that information via the map. And that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. We'd also love to hear about your encounters, so send us an email. Good luck out there.